Hello and welcome back to my channel Random Drop. I hope you had a good new year, a good holiday, but we are now in 2024, throw 2023 in the trash, and it's time to talk about all these damn RPGs are coming out in the next three months. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, before we get started, I just wanted to say, if you enjoy our content and want to stay up to date with our videos, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Thanks. So onto the video. So for the first quarter of 2024, if you haven't been paying attention, it is incredibly jam-packed by RPGs of the Eastern variety, right? Games made in Japan or in the East are all releasing in the span of three months, four to five very very big ones and there's also other games releasing in that time as well like Tekken 8 for example so hey as someone who loves RPGs JRPGs WRPGs CRPGs of all varieties I really wanted to talk about this onslaught that we are receiving in the next couple months here I want to call this the RPG mayhem of 2024 it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome, frankly. I am so damn excited. So without further ado, let's get this going. Let's start off with January. Now January, for the first portion of the month, hey, this is your time to wrap shit up, man. Time to wrap all that shit up. Go finish your Baldur's Gate. Go finish your Rogue Trader like I am. Go finish whatever crap you're playing at this time. Or if you're someone who is into the Yakuza series or the Yakuza series, go and finish Yakuza 7 because at the end of January on January 26th Yakuza 8 also known as Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is coming out on January 26th now if you're not familiar with the Yakuza series it's a long-running series that on a part 7 it switched to a new protagonist and a new combat style they switched to a turn-based combat and it's a bit wacky. It's all based off of like Ishiban's interpretation of what the fight is like because he thinks of everything as like an RPG because he was a huge Dragon Quest fan and whatnot, right? It, it's how they meld the combat into the game. But uh, the things that those games are great about is exploring cities uh, like Japan and going to like Don Quixote and things like that, doing side quests for wacky and all sorts of characters and some pretty good writing for the main story. It, it delves into the the back alley the gangs of japan and the, the yakuza infinite wealth seems to be setting in hawaii or at least part of it is going to be and it brings a long-standing character kiryu back into the fold uh, to come and hang out and kick some ass right i don't know what the full story of the game is yet i am someone who needs to i have played a part of yakuza 7 i need to finish it and uh, i'm there with you and i got it i got a month to catch up and finish that beast of a game so i can eventually give, the, give this game a try i might i might not play it on launch but it is something uh, i am excited about and wanted to jump into at some point down the line but if you're a rpg fan or a turn-based rpg fan the next couple of months are going to be insane for you uh, yakuza 8 being one of those games next on the list on january 31st or february 1st depending on where you're at in the world i guess Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is going to be released. Now, if you don't know, Grand Blue Fantasy is a, a gacha game series made in Japan a long time ago. I think it was like one of the first ones. And it was really popular. I think it had some notable people who like worked on Final Fantasy and things like that working on it. Some artists and people who built those worlds, right? So you can see a lot of similarities like, I mean, Bahamut's in there. And there's a bunch of summons and whatnot in the story. But that game came out quite a long time ago it was a huge success and they've they've been taking steps into making the game a fully realized game for quite a while now and expand the franchise i believe it is uh cry games is the current company uh, they released the fighting game working with arc system works that i personally really really love uh, i think the grand blue fantasy versus games are incredible they're incredibly fun the to play and really easy to get, get into because they've innovated in terms of inputs in a fighting game and like what that entails and you're more focused on the actual fighting in the game rather than worrying about the complications of doing freaking uh shoryukens and shit like that right on, on a fight stick so uh here we are with grand blue fantasy relink it is a fully realized action rpg with a end game multiplayer built in on the end of it where you fight 
large monsters in a group party using the characters from the game uh, with different roles and abilities and, and systems in place. It looks like it's gonna be a really fun time. And this game was in and this game was in development hell for quite a while actually. It didn't seem like it's gonna come out or there is some issues, it's changed hands every now and then, but in the past weeks or so, and even looking at these trailers, you can tell they there is a budget behind this game and they put a lot of work into it, right? It doesn't seem half-assed at all and looks quite incredible. Um, hopefully it's something fun to play. I'm really excited to get into it because I did like that world a lot. Uh, if you want to get into that world, there's actually anime series that plays part of the journey of the original game. This game is not the original game, right? It is its, its, its own story in that world. So these characters have already met up and caught up with each other. The main thing you really know is how Gran and Gita, the main characters, are linked with Lyria, who is like the main uh, female protagonist in the game. Them two are the main focus of the story overall. And again, you can get into the anime to see like how they met and again, go on part of that journey. I, I really like the anime overall. It sadly didn't finish. I think it was like being made around the time COVID happened, maybe with like the resurgence of the franchise, they'll continue it. But this is its own original story. The characters and events have already happened and they're going on their own adventure and hopefully it, it captures that right it gives me a good jrpg story but also i'm pretty excited about the, the the end game combat in the game it seems like they're gonna be it's gonna be like fantasy star online with big large climactic boss battles that you want to do with a team of friends and companions online so I, i'm super down for it i do want to give it a shot but yes, it is coming out a couple days after Yakuza, and that's not all, because the next game is one that I've been waiting for for quite a while, and I'm so happy. So yes, one day after the release of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is Persona 3 Reloaded. Now, if you don't know, and you're more of like a Persona 5 fan, because that's when a lot of people jumped in on the series, Persona 3 was the first game where they built these, they built the foundations of the structure of the modern first persona franchise right so the social links the daily schedules the how the base of the turn-based combat works and how the personas work this is where all that was made and 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 where like the series kind of really took off these people took notice with persona 3 and then it was persona 4 that like just the style and then the music kind of like elevated it to another level and the franchise has got on since then, right? Persona 2 is a very traditional RPG. You just go from place to place, uh, battling monsters in dungeons, right? Even though I love Persona 2 and, and its sequel, it, it is a, it's, it's very much like every other RPG you've played. The story is absolutely incredible, but it is just a regular JRPG. It was just not until Persona 3 where they kind of find found their own footing, right? And found out like, hey, this is how we want to make Persona games in the future. So now, after learning from everything from Persona 4, 5, and Royal, and all that stuff, we are going back to the father of this modern portion of the series and taking those lessons and bringing them back to Persona 3 Reloaded. And you can see it in the menus and the combat design, how the dungeons seem to be structured and more, given a bit more life, uh, the animations, all that stuff, right? It just oozes with style that the game somewhat had in the original Persona 3 but it has just been just cranked up to another level. I love Persona 3's story the most out of all the games in itself. Uh, it's, a, it's a more darker and mature story. So I'm really excited to get back into it, see it with, with modern graphics. Persona 3 is gonna be loads of fun. I cannot wait for it. But man, again, Yakuza 8, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Persona 3 all within like a week or so, right? And one literally coming a day after the other one, it's going to be freaking impossible to play all these things. And it's going to create this enormous backlog that I'm going to want to get through because there's even two bigger games coming out a month apart later. So yes, on February 29th, pretty much a whole month after the release of Persona 3 Reload, we have the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the second part of the trilogy of the Final Fantasy VII Remake that was announced five years ago now. It's been, it's been quite a while and quite a journey. It took a, while for, well, it took a while for that first game to come out, and now, since they built the base of that game, it only took a couple more years for this next part to come out, 
and it's out in the open world. We have left Midgar, and we're out to do everything in that game with a slight twist, it seems, as it seems the space ghosts, which I didn't love, or the time ghosts, whatever you want to call them, have had some effect on the game. It seems we are still going to relive a lot of the great stuff we love from the original game, but there's going to be that like sw slight twist in the back. I hope, and my hope is, that story-wise, that stuff doesn't overwhelm the game and get lost in it, kind of how like the first one did. I really kind of just want them to retell the story. I, I don't need this to be like a weird sequel, but I know, and I know for a fact that the open world and the combat and, and the characters and the character moments are gonna be top notch. And I'm super excited to see the whole crew fully realize and let them actually interact with each other a bit more uh, with through actual acting rather than, you know, text lines from the original game and we can see like hey how were sephiroth and cloud together when they like knew each other for a little bit right those little things like him calling him a puppy and shit like that that people love or like hey how do barrett and red 13 interact with each other things like that right that's like the stuff i want to see and with the dual text the summons all gonna be super super incredible uh the, the golden saucer all that but there is that slight like I know the combat, the gameplay, and the content is going to be there, but that story stuff on the back end, I'm just kind of not fully sold on yet. I'm going to enjoy this game. It's going to be so hard not to enjoy this game, but there's going to be that little thing in the back of my head of like, man, I kind of just wish they remade the game and didn't do this weird stuff, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll do something mind blowing with this. Uh, my hope is, right? I, I, I want to be surprised. I'm super excited for this journey. We have a month after the release of Persona 3 Reload and Relink and Yakuza 8 to wrap that stuff up or at least get a good check way into it because we're going to get into this massive game and hopefully get lost in this world. But that just adds to the log further because a month after this, this is a sequel I have been waiting for for so long and it was just announced a couple years ago and we're finally here we're finally close let's go finally to cap off this onslaught of rpgs made in the east and there's other games coming out right that, that prince of persia game looks pretty cool again there's tekken 8 and there's a bunch of other stuff coming out but this is just the rpg portion finally the sequel to dragon's dogma dragon's dogma 2 is coming out on March 22nd. I have legit been waiting 10 years for this game. Has it been 10 years? I don't even freaking know it. So Dragon's Dogma 1 came out on the PS3 and it was like in a time when people were starting to get tired of being handheld by games in a lot of ways. And here comes along this really weird game. Um, it had a lot of issues like the the world wasn't super interesting uh, and, and it kind of ran like shit on the PS3 and 360. But the ideas that it had with the pawn system and the combat and the monsters and the way the story gets really wild towards the end really intrigued people and made people like, oh, hey, what's this thing? And it quickly became a cult classic, right? It wasn't widespread, but the people who played it knew and they would be like, yo, you got to play Dragon's Dogma. But again, there was that large barrier of, of like the t sub 30 frame rate, right? And and it was on PS3 through 60. Bitter Black Isle, uh, Dark Arisen was released, I think a year or two later. It was the expansion of the game where they updated the game, uh, resolved a lot of the qualms people had with like some of the quests and fast travel and itemization and classes and things like that it kind of they did another pass through right it's like the definitive edition of the game uh added bitter black isle which was a basically a super boss area with it was a bit randomized it was kind of a roguelike in in ways you would get loot collect it go further in the dungeon and it would really test your characters and classes so people really 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 like that it's like oh hey they really, really got something here. And then it was not really until years later when they finally released the PC version of Dragon's Dogma, people took notice. It finally started getting the recognition the game deserved and people were a lot more open to that type of stuff nowadays due to like things like the Dark Souls series, right? People were just like, hey, this game is like kind of hard and obtuse, but that's fine. I don't need every game to literally tell me how to do every single little thing. And the depth in there, it's pretty fun and incredible. The way you can make classes and break classes, uh, the inventory systems and min-maxing, 
min-maxing the game in general was really really cool. And after years of not really hearing anything about the game, or that they even were gonna do a sequel, it was like a it was a dream for a lot of people, right? Because like Capcom didn't really talk about it. The initial game was a failure, right, in terms of sales. But then the PC version came out, and I think that changed Capcom's mind. And then Capcom started having successes with like Resident Evil 4, 5, 3, to the 2 remake, and they just started putting out bangers. The Devil May Cry 5, and, and the main producer or creator of Devil May Cry is the producer of this, right? He made Dragon's Dogma, and then went on to make, uh, I believe, DMC5, and now he's back again with Dragon's Dogma 2. And I think he's mentioned before, like, hey, this is something I've wanted to come back to at some point. Dude, I, I'm, I'm so about this. I am so excited for this fucking game. And the thing is, like, what they've shown, it just looks like more of that game, right? They didn't try to, like, reinvent the wheel. They were just like, hey, we made Dragon's Dogma 1. It was good. There's some parts we need to fix up, but it was good. So let's do more of it. And it's like them doing, I mean, it's a, a true sequel, right? It is them looking at that and being like, all right, let's add more. Let's do more. Let's fix our shit. Let's make the world more interesting. Let's update the graphics. But that game is still the fucking same. <laughs> that game is still you jumping around and, and doing that crazy combat on large monsters and climbing them all jankily. And, and with and with the pawn system, I bet the pawns are still gonna be jank as shit as well. But it's not like they try to make a live service game or add multiplayer to it for no reason. The pawn system, I think is good enough. And the way you can share pawns and all that, I, I'm so excited to meet people's pawns. Because <clears throat> there's always those funny stories of like, you, got a, you get a pawn that like really knows this quest because they took it on this like crazy ass adventure that he probably shouldn't have been on. But he, but then you, you hire that pawn and he's like telling you where to go and stuff. It, it's stuff like that that's really fun about the game and then of course the classes and it seems like this is just building more and more on those classes and hopefully my main hope is I, I bet the main combat the exploration is all, all going to be great my main hope is that the the world captures us a bit right and and is a bit more interesting because the first game is really generic in a lot of ways other than the ending right the last part of the game it's cinematic that dragon fight's fucking incredible in that first game the music uh in better black Isle is incredible there was just some parts i had it needed to hit and it was just world building and quest design those were the two things that they had to fix other than you know technical issues that was re later resolved in the pc version it was world building and quest design everything else man they nailed so hopefully with dragon's dogma 2 that's where we're at i cannot wait to see what that team has in store for us but again, this is the final game. At the end of the onslaught, we have this massive game that I've been so excited for and been praying for in my sleep is finally coming out. I don't think this is gonna be the best game in the world. I just need it to be Dragon's Dogma 2. That's all. We're here at the end of this first quarter. We have Yakuza 8, Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling, Persona 3 Reloaded, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, and Dragon's Dogma 2 all coming out in the first quarter of 2024. I personally, I have to play all these games. I need to know, but what about you? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. What are you going to play? Are you going to play Yakuza 8 and focus on that and maybe play the other ones later? Maybe Grand Blue isn't your thing. Maybe you've never really been into the Persona franchise. I think if you didn't really like four or five, you may actually really like three because the story is a bit different. And then we have seven. Everyone at some point has played Final Fantasy 7 at this point, especially if you're like looking up videos like this. You're, you're probably completely in. Space Ghosts or not, we're gonna we need to know what the fuck is gonna happen in that game, and the combat's gonna be incredible, just like it was in the first one. Then Dragon's Dogma. There's a lot of expectations on this game, and it could not meet them probably. But I, I don't need it to be perfect. I just need it to be Dragon's Dogma 2. I just want more of that first game. Is literally all I've wanted, and hopefully it just meets that expectation and I'll be totally happy. But what about you? Again, let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, do people still do that? And also, hey, drop by my streams. I do stream on YouTube sometimes and Twitch. Uh, I do multi-streams, right? So I'm doing it on both. Jump on on either end, let's hang out. And I will see you on the next Random Drop video. Peace. Hold.